the Alfie Wattam podcast. First thing I wanted to delve into is um, Mr. Musk's um, Neuralink has been um, in the news quite a bit recently mm. uh, for a variety of reasons. Um, but the essence of what they're trying to do is is really quite groundbreaking if you um, if you look at it from from kind of a first principles perspective. Um, let me just show a quick clip of um, this is a couple of years old now, but um, if you're listening on audio, now is a good time to turn on the video as well. But um, mm. essentially, this is a, um, a monkey. I believe, yeah. I believe it's the right word. <laughs> and he's got a, uh, a tube there, which has got a banana smoothie going through it. And with his hand, he's moving a Joy-Con um, to move um, on the screen, um, a little uh, white circle to move it to the orange cube. The interesting thing, and he's doing that through his hand, just as a human would do, then they disconnect the Joy-Con. So he's doing it, but how is it the white circle moving? Well, it's moving by the neural link. So by a chip in the, in the, in the brain of the chimp um, measuring the electrical signals um, and and whatnot I won't go into the the tech and the science I don't well, I tend to understand it but there it is showing on the screen um, what it looks like he's playing pong using his mind there's no there's no hand moving at, at that point it's literally just thinking up thinking down and um, and pong is is being played the first ever video game um, crazy um, wild what, what what do you think when you see that James the first thing that I think like the first emotion that comes to mind is um, excitement actually yeah. so i i love that kind of thing yeah. right i have i've actually said in the office it was weird because i had this discussion the other day i said it you know kind of what's the right word bio augmentation bio yeah. technology yeah. you know bio hacking cyberpunk sort of thing yeah. I, I if something came to the market that that had you know strong research yeah i would definitely augment myself me too sign me like up 100 yeah, percent, yeah. right so yeah. but dangerous at the same time like if you if like i love um media around this probably the best portrayal that i that's that i've seen recently is the like the cyberpunk game that came out like great game. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah great game yeah. like played through it but a lot of the themes are really like genuinely interesting in that right so yeah. i know it's based on the works of i can't remember the writer actually who, who wrote the books but um like i think that's that's right that they like, the this could be dangerous and like in that in that kind of world of like companies can you know mega corporations yeah you know having access to 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 data yeah um that is you know goes down to the biological level that is dangerous right we've already seen what can happen <laughs> to organizations that have uh, like social data like you know you take yeah. a look at any of the kind of current issues in social media um and you know look at like we were just discussing before right around um Things like TikTok being, you yes. know, having a strong yep. um, ties with, you know, uh, the Chinese state. So it's people get freaked out by that. Mm. So although the technology in isolation is super cool, mm. um, we have to be careful, right? Yep. Like what, who's going to own it? What's it going to be used for? Like there's an ethics question, that I think. Can it be hacked? Can it be hacked? Yeah. Right. H you know, who's got access to their data? What can they use it for? Like, yeah. Basically, uh, in my opinion, like yes, it could be hacked, right? It's pro it would probably, of course, it can. Everything can be hacked. We right. saw LastPass, which is meant to be a secure yeah. password vault oh, manager, yes. just just got hacked recently. Yeah, I got I got that um, got that email. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Switched everything over. Thanks quickly. very much, LastPass. Um, yeah, so look, I'd still all make my, all, augment myself, right? Still like I think it, yeah. the personally, I, I want my eyes to be better, so my eyes are not the best. So that's what I would quite like. If there's some sort of neural. Yep. optic link uh sign me up right but like all sorts of things like you know if you could extend um your lifespan mm. by this mm. i think that would be awesome i don't think i think you know there's a question of how far do you go with that i'm not sure but yeah you know if you can replace broken parts mm. like why wouldn't you do that there's so many illnesses that are you know un curable right now sure that it, you know if you could replace that with some yep. some form of machine or you could regulate it like that's that surely that the benefits outweigh the cons i think but you know knowing the way I'd the world agree, goes but it depends because you know there's going to be situations where some of these go wrong and people of just course. you know just get fried or, or whatever and <laughs> um maybe you don't want to be the first early adopter with this sort of tech maybe you want to no. wait wait till version three or four comes no. out perhaps but i'm like you i'm like you know sign me up give me the robot arm give me the the, the mechanical <laughs> legs you know let, let, let's go for it um elon thinks that will be able to use Neuralink in a number of different applications. He, he says the first 
kind of main usage will be very soon people will be able to use a smartphone yeah. who are disabled, who can't touch the screen um, faster than somebody with thumbs and, and, and working fingers and that yeah. sort of thing. Do you see that being a revolutionary use case, perhaps? Yeah. Like, I think um, any technology that, that solves a core problem, right, and I'm sure if you are physically disabled in a way that you cannot interface with technology, right, yeah. and I know this is this is a consideration for all um, web developers, really, these days, the kind of accessibility and stuff. Like, yeah. building technology to support the, frankly, quite basic tools that we have right now to help those people is quite hard. I think mm. if you can kind of almost remove the kind of patch around it, and actually solve the problem at its core, which is like, okay, if you can't use your your hands, let's say, yeah. and you just interface with it directly through your mind or, you know, through through where you're looking at, like that's a revolution. Mm. So yeah, I think I think if if you can make it reality, that's only a great thing. I can't see in that isolated case the downside, right? It's mm. it's it, it just goes back to that core question as always, which is who's using the data and what's, yeah. what's the purpose there? The, the, the <laughs> trillion dollar question, right? <laughs> um, where, where this next step goes is he, he believes that you'll be able to send thoughts to each other. Mm. Um, maybe that's why he bought Twitter because you, <laughs> you, can, you can think tweet and you can think, you know, send to that person or just think publicly yeah. or, or whatever. Um, that's maybe, very concerning. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, but it, that could replace verbal communication. Yeah. Um, we're already pretty introverted and sure. people living in VR and, and whatnot. Yeah. Do, do you think sending thoughts to each other would be a good thing, um, in innovation, yeah. or something crazy and perhaps, you know, going too far? Good question. Good question. Because hmm. I, I, yeah. I don't know the answer What's to it. Yeah, off the top of my head, I, I, I'm not sure. Um, so if I take, like, the example of sharing thoughts publicly, mm. um, we have those platforms in the form of social media like Twitter, right? Like, frankly, people share sometimes too much publicly. Overshare. Or they overshare or they, or they share something that's actually not not cool and people get rightly upset, sometimes wrongly upset, in my opinion, as well. Um, in terms of, like, one-to-one -one thought sharing, I don't see... I don't see the great innovation there. Like, if I want to text my girlfriend something... Sure. I text my girlfriend something, mm. Right. She reads that it's a private conversation. Yeah, like it depends on how the technology would work. But almost if I'm kind of s sat there with this neural link chip, and then I kind of get some brainwave flying in through my ears, or whatever, and I go, "Okay, my girlfriend says she's hungry. Like, <laughs> shall we go out for dinner or or yeah. something?" And like, I fancy pizza. Sure, amazing, but potentially disruptive at the same time. Like, I suppose yeah. it depends on what the technology is. Like, I don't know. I I I personally don't see and I, I always think of, about this with kind of technology innovations which is i don't feel the need right now to want to share in a better way people's thoughts okay but maybe i'm missing the point right like i'd maybe need to see some of the use cases that, that he's pitching well we, we went from people um you know if, we, if we're talking about sending information and ideas it was you know stone tablets to carrier mm. pigeons to, to, to letters to to the internet and social media and now voice with Siri and Alexa yeah. and um, and perhaps for is the final frontier um, yeah. maybe um, but yeah I mean it, it, it's it's so far away from anything that we've got right now that it's it's yeah. it's like should we go there um, I think if the innovation continues to happen, though, and the tech is uh, plausible, then it, it will catch on. It will happen because you'll be at a disadvantage if you're not adopting. Like if, yeah. if you've got two people interviewing for a job, one of them has got a neural link and they can access Wikipedia and chat GPT and it's sure. in their mind and the other person doesn't, then evolutionary, that person will be better. Yeah. Uh, I, I, fundamentally, I do believe that this, these, th this kind of step with, you know, is is the next step in human evolution, right? Like yeah. we, yeah. our technology is is advancing at a faster rate than you know biology can catch up with, right? So it's only natural that, in my opinion, that that in order to actually use some of this technology that we're developing at such a pace that we have to change our bodies because yeah. it's not happening fast enough, right? So yeah. I think yes, is it the last frontier? Um, Probably, mm. I, uh, you know, the more I think about it, actually, when you were speaking just then, I was thinking, okay, 
actually there's when I think of thoughts, I was thinking it more as kind of like exactly what people are like sharing their thoughts in the form of social media. But the more I think about it, I'm thinking about kind of emotional sentiment to, to sure. a scenario yeah. and being able to just know that if you're, I don't know, imagine you were speaking to somebody and, and you know, humans right now work, work off the, the basis of body language and, yeah. and sort yeah. of gesturing and facial expressions. Like what if you just knew that that person was sad or, or yeah. you, yeah. or you annoyed them with what you said, right? Yeah. Like yeah. certainly, um, that would be helpful for me. Be helpful with your girlfriend, <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> yeah, be helpful with my wife. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I uh, I could just have a, a colour coding system. Green is is good <laughs> to speak to her, and red is, you know, back back the fuck away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when yeah, when's uh, when's that coming to market, please? That would yeah, be yeah. great. Well, come on, Elon. Let's be there. Okay. Hey, thanks for watching this YouTube video. If you want to see more like this, please remember to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.